All right. So here I have uh, two gastropods, class Gastropoda. They are snails, um, land snails, uh, which you might call a pulmonate land snail. Uh, the reason I say pulmonate is that uh, pulmonary means lung, and they don't have lungs, but they do breathe air. They don't breathe air the way that we do. They don't inhale and exhale, but instead of gills, which would dry out on land, these are terrestrial animals, but terrestrial from terra, meaning land. Um, being terrestrial, their gills would dry out. They don't have gills. The gills are diminished, and the inside surface of the mantle is their respiratory surface. They use that for gas exchange. We call it gas exchange because they're exchanging oxygen for carbon dioxide, uh, the oxygen needed for cellular respiration. And um, these are both snails. What I've done, though, is I've already taken the shell off of one of them, uh, and left the shell on the other so we can make a comparison and see the features with and without the shell, internal and external anatomy. Um, so let's look at external first. Now, reminder, these are mollusks, and the mollusk body plan is that they have a muscular foot or head foot, head suggesting cephalization, which is a concentration of um, sense organs in the anterior end of the body, and the gastropods are very cephalized. They have eyes on stalks, and they have two sets of tentacles, and those tentacles serve both a uh, tactile sense of touch and chemoreception, sense of taste. And uh, the eyes, of course, are photoreception, the sense of, of vision. They produce a good image. They're not like the eyes, the eye spots of a flatworm that were just a sensitive delight. These are well-developed eyes with lenses that produce a, a clear image, and these things can see very well. Um, so the, the head foot is where the head would be and where the foot, the muscular foot, which it uses for locomotion, these, their muscular foot is flattened along the belly side of the animal. Uh, another word for belly would be gastro, like gastrulation for the gut. So since they have a wide foot on the belly, they are gastropods, belly foot. And, um, so let's take a look. Here we have see that the foot is wide and flat, okay, and it uses that to uh, propel itself. Um, here you can see an eye stalk on this side. Hopefully, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not holding it very well in the, in the camera frame. There's an eye stalk. Okay, there's an eye stalk. So the eye stalk uh, demonstrates their ability to to, uh, to use vision, and it's concentrated on the head end of the animal, so that's called cephalization. The, uh, the tentacles on this animal are, are not very uh, distinct, so you probably can't see them on the video, but that's life. Um, oop, I broke the shell accidentally, so I guess we're going to have two of them where we can see inside. So down under here is the edge of the mantle. The mantle houses the mantle cavity and protects the gills if there were any, and it also secretes the shell. Now on this animal, the front of the mantle secretes calcium carbonate faster than the back, and the right side of the shell, the mantle, secretes calcium carbonate faster than the left. Actually, the left side secretes faster than the right. Um, that's why the whorl coils to the right. The side that produces calcium carbonate faster is going to be the, the side that grows faster. And so if it grows faster on the left, then it'll be pushed over to the right. And because of that, one side of the shell grows faster than the other, and that causes the shell to coil. So the snail shell is coiled. That's called a whorl, W-H-O-R-L. And so there's the edge of the mantle. It opens up to the mantle cavity, which is protected there. There's the muscular foot. Got cephalization. Okay. And the visceral mass, of course, would be the inside and where the gills are. Now, let's see. Here we've taken the shell off. And if I was to make sure I'm in, in frame here, there's an opening here where air can get in. There's no gills in there because this is a pulmonate snail. Um, the opening to the mantle is very small, so it doesn't dry out. And in others, it would be very large, but in these animals, it's very small. And um, air goes in for gas exchange. 
Now, this is not a filter feeder like the clam was. This is a, um, an algae eater. And if I look over here, I can find the mouth. And you see a little, you can't see it very well, but you've got a little dark spot there that would be the feeding mechanism of this animal called the radula. And it uses the radula to scrape algae off of rocks or whatever. And you can see that the visceral mass of the animal has coiled following the contours of the shell. Okay. I'm not going to open this animal up because everything's so small inside that there's not much that you'd be able to see. But there we have a gastropod. Belly foot, gastropod, wide and flat on the belly side of the animal. Highly cephalized, two sets of tentacles for tactile and chemoreception. Another set of tentacles that are eye stalks, eyes with lenses that produce a good image. Snails produce a shell. Slugs do not, otherwise they are exactly the same um, within terms of their body form. They're both gastropods. Uh, and their internal anatomy would be much like that of, of the uh, clam, except for the gills. Okay, they also have an open circulatory system like the clam. The body cavity is filled with blood, so the internal organs are surrounded by blood and bathed in blood and nourished from the outside. So gastropods, belly foot, snails and slugs.